Today is the day that I start to kick ass and take names. It's... That, that being said, today being Wednesday still, because I recorded the previous segments, went and got myself something to eat, and then I decided I wasn't going to wait any longer. I'm just going to go ahead and knock these two bitches over. I'm not going to do Whitney immediately, though. I'm going to first go in here just to show off that there is a random glitch here with Lyra. I'm not entirely sure what the go is with this, but that Marrow Sprite is moving around as well, which is kind of hilarious. But I did a practice run of the Lyra fight and found that it is actually a lot easier once you know what the hell that you're dealing with. So I'm going to leave with Talia. I'm going to slam an icy win with it. A critical hit is actually far better than I was expecting. That puts me into a really good position because Talia is good to deal with the Roselia. Uh, I first have to deal with this Ninetales though and this Ninetales is a bit more obnoxious than it has much of a right to be. Here, I'm not going to go with the Toxic Spikes, I'm just going to go and I'm just going to go straight in with the Bubble Beams. Flamethrower is going to be its usual obnoxious but not that damaging self. And so here, I'm sort of subconsciously hoping to get a Bubble Beam speed drop off this. I was not aware that Ninetales had Confused Ray though. It, it, she never used it in either of the previous two shots I had at this. And of course, because it is luck hacks, it has to benefit her in every single possible scenario. Okay, I have been proven wrong. Not that it matters because this is still very, very bullshit. Um, I would like to... Yeah, I've only got the three super potions. I don't want to waste them. That's the problem. I don't want to, I don't really want to waste them, so I'm gonna see if Tentacle can tank this. No, I didn't think so. Okay. Uh, this is slightly new territory for me here. Actually, no, it's not, because I can just use Dragon Rage and kill it. Uh wait. Gotta wait for the luck hacks. Okay, I have fought my way through the luck hacks, so this giant tail should see itself hitting the hay. Uh, next up is the Marrow, whose ass is quite easily kicked by Carnivine. I did do some off-screen grinding, so everything's up to at least level 20. And so if I just throw Bullet Seed, two connections with that should knock it on its ass. And then lastly, we have the Roselia, which Talia will just sort of smack for six as soon as you can get past the Stun Spore. The Stun Spore missing is a nice bonus there. Uh, tanks the hit here, and so I'm fully expecting Lyra to heal this thing. Yeah, there goes the Lemonade. So all I need to do is just throw the Icy Wind at it again. Two speed drops is nice. If she heals it again, then I'm not going to mind. I'm going to go the Quick Attack anyway, because that should put it on its ass. Okay, there it is. So yeah, with enough knowledge and sort of foresight, this fight is actually not that difficult. And with Flareon reaching level 23, it now becomes actually really damn good. Since it has a physical fire move. Yay! Also, she gave me no money for winning. You cheap bitch. I'm not going to ever use the damn faction case. Piss off. Oh my god, you're such a robber. Alright, so the first thing I want to find out is, am I actually blocked from entering the underground from this side? No, I am not. Okay, I will not complain too much about that. Uh, I will need to go back and heal though, since Tentacool is a little bit worse for wear. Uh, let's see. And so, the irony here is that now that Flareon is the strongest Pokemon on my team, it is now no longer a case of just using the trainers down here of, to raise the levels up. But instead, it's just going to sort of sit here. It's going to have the experience share taken off it. And I just sort of get to grind my way through all of these idiots as I go through what I believe is the first Pokemon playthrough of the day where I can actually talk at length about my team. Uh, let me actually go ahead and bring up the relevant image. No, that's not the one. 
Okay, this is the one right here. Let me bring this up here. Bear with me, I'm just looking at- I'm just bringing up this image. Just to- just so I sort of know what the Pokemon I have used in this playthrough are, instead of having to just sort of remember them offhand. So... This is another one of those playthroughs that I did on my R4 with a ROM. It wasn't a ROM hack though, it was just a regular heart gold ROM. And for this playthrough, I sort of did go chopping and changing between team members. I had a grand total of 10 team members that I used on a sort of regular basis. Uh, my starter in this playthrough was a Cyndaquil, which I evolved into... Obviously, I evolved into Typhlosion and stuck with that with the whole game. I believe it was called Torchwood. I don't know why I named it Torchwood. But it, I guess it kind of does fit it because it's a fire type, and I'm not even sure what Torchwood is about. I know it's like a show, but I don't know what the hell it's about, so it's very, very... It's really not that great of a reference, but it's just sort of there. Um, it's a Typhlosion. It doesn't do much outside of the whole fire fair, but aside from that, it wasn't too bad. I used a Quagsire named Quake. Probably could have picked a better name for it and reserved Quake for something that would have actually sounded epic on it. But this thing was basically just there to spam Earthquake and also be just sort of a Pokemon that you can't hit for super effective damage unless you have the one specific type for it. <laughs> so it, it wasn't too bad. It was slow, which was a bit eh, but I didn't really care about the speed. I was kicking some ass with Earthquake, so I had no reason to complain about that. I used a Bellossom named Bectep because it's Bectep's favorite Pokemon. At least as far as I'm aware, that might have changed, but at the time I nicknamed it, it was Picked Up Savage Pokemon, so I stuck with that. Uh, it kicked ass. I think it got like Hidden Power Ice, which was really e effective. I stuck with that on the move set, and it worked out pretty well. Um, it was slow, like most of the other stuff on my team, but it 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 put in it, it put in the it put in its work, so I didn't have any real reason to complain. I uh, also fuck you for you literally you actively sought out to parafusion me. So you are you, you suck at life. So there you go. It's fucking cock block. Ingrain Nah. I was actually second guessing myself there. Do I actually want ingrain? Because ingrain does allow me to heal, but I can't switch out if I set it up. So, I'm just going to say no to that one. Anyways, next team member I had was an Ampharos, which I named Sean after Sean the Sheep. Uh, which is a very stupid, like, claymation kids show about a sheep that just gets up to stupid shenanigans. It's a bit dumb, but it's just sort of there. Anyways, Aurora Beam. I am going to get rid of Tail Whip. I would like to keep Icy Wind there just because of the speed drops. And, but Aurora Beam is just a better ice move, so having the both of them on there, I can just sort of chop and change between them, depending on the situation. Uh, she's buying something else for me. Okay, that's a bit dumb. I was- I, the reason I actually went in here was just to check my cash stack, because Lyra didn't give me anything, but I thought the game may have interpreted it as just giving me a maximum cash stack, in which case it would have been very, very stupid. But, no, she quite literally did not give me anything. Uh, what are you? Uh, yeah, that would be nice if I had something that evolved through happiness, but I don't have that, so, whatever. Uh, wouldn't mind getting rid of the paralysis off of Flareon, though. Uh, can I do that now? No, I cannot, unless I go back and heal. Alright, well, you're just gonna have to stick with the paralysis then. Um, so yeah, it was an Ampharos. It didn't have Tail Glow, because that, it, it only gets that sort of stuff in ROM hacks, so... It's unfortunate. It, it wasn't too terrible. This Lickitung is giving me nightmares. This Lickitung really is giving me nightmares. Why the fuck do you have Thunderbolt? Whenever I'll just switch into fan here, that'll kick its ass. Moving on, what? Okay. I was going to talk about my next team member, but this like a tongue is pissing me off far more than it has any real right to. Drop 
fucking dead, you piece of shit. Thank you. I have to go back and heal now, and I can't take the southern exit out of the underground because I'm going to get picked up by that trainer. Ugh, that stupid liquor tongue. I'm starting to hate liquor tongues a considerable amount between Whitney's one and that one that just has type coverage to the highest goddamn degree. I'm getting pissed. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Next team member is an Espeon. It's an Espeon. It doesn't have Magic Guard, because it didn't have access to that because it's the 4th gen game. But aside from that, it was a very good Pokemon. I don't think anybody would have expected anything else coming from a Espeon. I uh, named it Sunny, uh, spelt with an O instead of a U. If it went with a U, it would have been highly unoriginal. Not that Sunny with an O is that much different, but I figured I might as well do it. I didn't have any better names, so... I went and stuck with that. Uh, and then the last team member that I used on a permanent basis, at least in the jo at least in the Johto side, was a Crobat, which I named Cricket. I kind of like using Crobat, and I actually have a bit of a thing with Crobats where I only use them if they've got Hypnosis. So obviously I had to pick up a female one and then get a male hoot hoot, give it hypnosis and then breed it and then do all that sort of stuff. Thankfully though, in situations like this where you're raising them from level 1, they get to evolving into a Golbat at 22 and then they evolve into a Crobat at the very next level. So you've, I've had that as soon as I was there and so it was kicking ass like any other Crobat normally does. And so I was quite happy with that. Uh, in the then there was four other Pokemon that I used on occasions. I had a Honchcrow. I I don't think I I, th I think I actually did use it as a fly slave or something like that. But it was actually pretty useful. Is it was kind of a fly slave, but it served as more of a more of a team member sort of role than a fly slave, like just about any other flying Pokemon that you would normally have that had fly. It's not really that different, but I had the Murkrow evolved into a Honchkrow, named it Sirocco after Blackwing Sirocco the Dawn. If I ever use another one, I'm going to be naming it after another Blackwing monster because it just kind of works like that. It was pretty damn solid. It kept hitting very hard with its physical attack, and so I was quite happy with that. And I might as well kill a bit of time. Which, ah. Okay. Um. These did not exist before. Okay, you can just sort of dance. I guess they're all just sort of dancing around and stuff like that. I don't know why Wobbuffet and Wine Order here, though. Uh-huh, cool, Wobba. Good job. Uh, what do you do? Oh, you you sell coins. Okay, that's actually kind of cool. Um, that's cool. Give me the coin case. What's the exchange rate? Uh, unsurprisingly, this. Okay. Well, I'm not going to get too much in the way of coins unless I do some Voltorb Flip. So, what's the exchange here? 3,500 coins for a Porygon. I imagine that this is how I'm supposed to get my hands on a Porygon. So, I'll have to come back here a considerable amount of time later. Uh, what do we have here? Not too bad, but obviously it requires a shitload of coins that I'm going to need to friggin grind up for, so I'm not going to do that right now. I will mess around with a bit of Voltorb Flip, just so I can get the rest of these team members out of the way. Um, so I had the Sirocco, I had Sirocco, and then I also sort of used a Beedrill. Um, it wasn't for very long though, like I sort of had it there, and then I decided to just sort of go with something entirely different. Go. So I just sort of stuck with that. Um, I named it Zubba. Yeah, I named it Zubba after the bees from Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie for that matter, but whatever. So I. Uh, yeah, I like how I have to concentrate on this because I'm going to end up getting my ass handed to me if I don't. But I also had. 
for my last team member. I've only got, actually no, I've got two team members to talk about. I used the Snorlax, I picked the one up in Kanto, named it Tubby Lord. I don't think it ever actually served any real purpose, so I'm not entirely sure why it's on there outside of just making this team display image look clean af. Uh, okay, well that sort of exists there. One, two. Okay, so there's another one and there's the bomb. I'm gonna say this is the this is the three. Ah, fuck off. Okay, that was far more obnoxious than I had any right to. I'll go with one more round of this, and then I will move on to probably the gym leader again. Um, so, yeah, Tubby Lord wasn't that interesting. I don't think there was any real reason for me to add it to the team, but it was just sort of there. Uh, the last team member, I don't think it was the last team member I added, but it was probably the most, it's probably the most interesting one out of this, uh, is a shiny Tangler, which I found in the route south of Pallet Town, I think it is. Yeah, that one. Um, so, yeah, I just sort of found this. I was a bit pissed because it meant that I had, it pretty much meant that I ha had dumped Bick Dip, unless I just didn't want to use it. I decided to expand my team to 10 and use the both of them. I gave it a very stupid name though. I named it Bling Green. Yes, by all means roast me. You, it, you're, you're well within your rights to roast me. I'm not going to complain too much about that. Uh, this, this actually doesn't have any bombs in it. I should have picked that up earlier. Um, that works. So three, five, seven. Wait. God damn it. Okay, whatever. I'm done talking about this playthrough anyway. It's fine. I think the only other noteworthy thing that I did in that playthrough, aside from finding the shiny, um, Tangler, I don't remember if it was this Harkov playthrough or another one, but I did catch Pokeros in one of those playthroughs. I know I caught it in a JoJo playthrough, but I just can't remember which one. I But I know I caught Pokeros at some point there. So, that was the team that I used. I, it, for the most part, it was fairly unremarkable. It was just a run of heart gold. Nothing too far out of the ordinary, realistically. So, but that's about it. I had to bring up my recording software there just to see how much time had passed. So, let's see how terrible this fight's going to be. I have a bit more knowledge of it now. I've got a Flareon that's actually useful, so I've got a full team of six that can serve a decent purpose. I think the basis on why I lost in the previous segment was just because I kept getting luck hacked by Body Slam. I actually kind of want to check to see what the chance of getting a Paralysis off Body Slam is, because to nail it three times in a row on stuff that wasn't already paralyzed is a bit stupid. So, let me have a look at attack decks, Stun Pearl Platinum, uh, Body Slam, what is the chance? Uh, 30%. So, not quite what I would like to have to deal with here, but... You shouldn't- it, that is basically like connecting a one-hit kill move three times in a row. That's how bullshit it was. So... Uh, now the question is, who do I want to lead with here? I wouldn't mind leading with either Talia or Carnivine because they won't be affected by the stupidity of Attract. I'm going to try to stick with the same strategy here though and get Toxic Spikes up and try to hinder the bulk of these Pokemon because I don't actually have anything that's super effective against normal types. Which therefore means I don't have any fighting moves. I was just saying that based on the assumption that normal was weak to more than one type when it just wasn't. Okay, so I know that this thing will open up with either Disable or Attract. I kind of wanted to use Attract. Like, ideally I'd like something to miss. But I guess the first thing I want to do is lay down Toxic Spikes and see what it'll do. If it uses dis Disable and Connects, which it doesn't, it goes with the Attract here. I outspeed it here, and so now I want to try to get through the Attraction and lay down that second layer of Toxic Spikes. If I can do that then we'll be in a pretty good position. Uh, that is not happening though. And this thing has Body Slam as well. Okay, so I've only got one more shot left. It needs to go through. 
No. No. We're going to be resetting. I don't give a fuck. I'm safe scumming this. That. No. No right. She has got no fucking right to do that. So we're going to go ahead and do this again. I'm not entirely sure if the ROG is set in stone here. If I like try to do this again, we'll have to find out what happens. Okay. Attract. Okay. So I was able to work that out in a way that favors me. Okay, it's going to disable. I don't much care for that, but whatever. Um, I'm kind of debating what I want to switch into here. Carnivine can kick its ass, Flareon can kick its ass, but this thing's got body slam, and if it paralyzes me, I'm not going to be in a very good situation. If I had something with Whirlwind, I would just shuffle her team members around and just get them all poisoned. And so that would... Uh, cause considerable harm to their bulk. I'm going to go with Carnivine. It's going to body slam. No paralysis. Thank you. Now, do I want to go with the bullet seed to try to in get some damage in, or do I want to poison fang and get a shot at poisoning and potential flinch hacks? I'll go with poison fang. I outspeed it, so I've got a shot at, I think, poison fang and flinch. I get the poison off anyway, though, so that's not too bad. Disable, I'm not that fussed about because I've already got the poison off, so I'm just going to spam bullet seed. That's good. Body slam goes in. Paralysis is not that good. I don't have anything to heal paralysis. I probably should have gone back and picked up some paralyzed heals or something like that. I'm not going to blow up too much about it, though, because I've got revives, and those are kind arguably more important. Okay, Carnivine's going to get its ass handed to it here. If I can outspeed it with Dratini, I can just kill it with Dragon Rage. Okay, cool. There that goes. Okay, Wigglytuff goes in. I know that this thing has Ice Beam, so obviously I'm not going to go into Fan P. I would have gone into Carnivine. Like, last time I went into Carnivine, and I guess that was a bit of a problem as well. I kind of want to say Flareon for the Mill Tank, because I feel like the Mill Tank will probably be the biggest... I, I feel like Flareon will probably have a good shot against the Mill Tank. So... I'm going to go with Talia. That's going to nullify the Attract. There goes the Poison. And then here, I guess I'm just going to see what I can do with the Roar there. And see what it's got to counteract me. Okay, Psychic. Special Defense Drop is not very welcome. I outspeed it already. I'll go with another Aurora Beam, see how far down it goes there. There's the Wish. Now, she's going to heal it here, so I should probably go for another Aurora Beam. Oh, no, it healed. It, it, it didn't heal. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so that renders the wish completely useless. And here's the Lopunny, which, as we have already established, has Jump Kick. So... I, I'm not entirely sure what I want to go with here. This is the only female I've got, and so if this Lopunny has a tract, I pretty much don't have a choice but to have to deal with that. I was actually going to Thunder Wave here. I'm an idiot because I forgot about my own Toxic Spikes. Let's see what Dragon Rage does. Dizzy Punch had a annoying knack of causing confusion. And there it goes again. There, yeah, there's the Luck Hacks. The Luck Hacks that I just did not want to have happen. Ugh. This thing would have been pretty damn easy to deal with if I had Drift Loon. Dizzy Punch can't miss either, that's a problem. Mmm, that sucks. Alright. Let me go into Tentacle. See what Tentacle can do to, can do to this thing. Uh, absolutely nothing. It's gonna outspeed as well, I'm pretty sure. Let me see if I outspeed it. No, it outspeeds me, shit. Alright, um, I guess we're going to have to send Flareon in and kick its ass with Flame Wheel. See what Flame Wheel does to it. Eh, it's there. Agility could be obnoxious. It depends on if Toxic's going to kill it here or not. Kill it. Okay, cool. That's quite easily dealt with then. Uh, Clefable. I'm going to blindly assume that Clefable's got some kind of answer to Flareon here. 
she probably wouldn't have sent it in otherwise, unless she wanted to send Miltank in for some inadequately explored reason. But I'm going to go with Talia. I'm going to hit it with an Icy Wind. Yeah, it's got Water Pulse. That actually makes a whole lot of sense. God damn it, confusion! Oh, you son of a bitch! And it put up a Reflect. So now... Okay, so f my secret weapon has been defused. Oh, that is so rude. Alright, well, I need to drop this thing's speed. Uh, no, you have to attack and drop this thing's speed. Can you snap out of confusion sometime this century, please? Okay, there's the speed drop. Citrus Berry heals it. Do I outspeed it? Yes, I do. Ass, and then get in the quick attack, and that puts the level on its ass. All right, now here comes the mill tank. I. Nah. It's gonna outspeed Rutini and kill it. So it's gonna outspeed Talia as well. All right, I will see what Fan P can do. There's the Lumberry going off. Okay, a track doesn't help, especially when I can't get my defense up. Get your defense up. No. It's already too damn late because I got the paralysis off. Okay. There's a bit. Come on! Come on! Two! Okay. Ugh. This is not good. Um. Mm. Alright, Flareon. Go the flame wheel. God, I'm outsped by this thing as well. It also landed a crit, and that didn't do anything! Shit! Okay. I have a backup plan. Get Tail Whip off, and then take this opportunity to use a revive. And I need to revive... Actually, no. No, we'll Super Potion. Super Potion on the Dratini. It missed there, so I'm going to get in a quick attack, so I've at least got a little bit more damage dealt on the, onto this thing. And there's the rollout sweep. Shit. If I can take this second turn of rollout and get the paralysis off, that puts me in a decent situation. Or I can dodge it. Dragon Rage will kill it. Fuck! Why did it use... Why the hell did it use Dragon Rage then? so stupid. I don't care. Use Dragon Rage. If she was going to heal it again, then it would have been a good choice. Okay, there's the biggest issue out of the way. Uh, you're not getting slammed because that move sucks. One more Pokemon left, I'm pretty sure. Stantler. Um... Mm. This is not good. Well, it's going to get the Toxic Spikes. So... Okay, I'm going to stay in. Toxic Spikes goes off. Uh, intimidates. That's not going to do anything to Dratini, because Dratini is now going to serve as Death Fodder. Now, I need something that I know can outspeed this Stantler. Okay, so now I've got to look at my stats here. Uh, no, I want the stats. Okay, 56, 23, 37, 39, 45. It looks like Flareon is my best option here. In that case, uh, we're going to revive the Flareon. Stantley uses Stomp. That sounds about right. So we'll get Flareon in. Fire up a flame wheel at it, see how much that does. 
that's a good amount. Uh, hypnosis is a bit more obnoxious than it has much of a right to be. I can wake it up though. What does what does Stomp do? Not enough. All right, that's it. That's the game. Super potion up, whatever, however much you want, because this thing is taking more and more damage with Toxic, and you can't switch out. That is that. Both of those stupid luck hacks bitches have been put fair on their ass and in their place. Thank Christ. Yeah, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Always Christ and Shalos. Alright, give me a fucking badge, you stupid dits. And the Attract TM, it's not a bad idea to have that, because it can cause disruption and stuff like that. It realistically might not even be a terrible idea to put on Dratini, because it's got Thunder Wave. <laughs> That's the stupid part. <laughs> um, I will work out what I'm going to do with that later, because for now I get to... Yeah, whatever, I'll go, might as well end the segment by picking up the stuff that Mum bought me. Alright, how many berries have you got for me, dipshit? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, the super potion's nice. I... I give you kudos for giving me the super potion. Those berries... Which which berries are those, actually? Super effective ghost move, super effective steel move. Yeah, the cassette berry wouldn't be too bad if I still had Drifloon. I like how I keep going on tangents about Pokemon that I've used and dumped. Okay. At this point now, I need healing items. So I will go ahead and buy that. Not that it'll really help me to that much of a benefit, because I'm kind of ending the segment now, aren't I? Alright. I will... Next time, the first thing I'm going to be doing next time is exploring the rest of the... Uh, eh, there's not too much else that's interesting here in this city, so next time I'm going to go into the name radar. I'm going to have names picked out for all of these Pokemon. Uh, actually, I do have a name picked out for Carnivine, so I might as well uh, implement that. Uh, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and call it Trap Tricks. That's why I wanted a female one, because all the Trap Tricks monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! are basically just these females that are, like, disguised as, like... I think, like, plants disguised as females, or, like, plants that have... Whatever. Point is, there's a very feminine theme towards the Trap Tricks monsters in general. And they all have, like, either plants or insects and stuff like that that they use to hunt their food, or something like that. But... That is out of the way. That was quite an ordeal, but I managed to get through it. And so hopefully there will be better things to come starting next week. So next time we're going to go up to Route 35, we're going to go through some trainers. Depending on when I record that segment, I may be doing bug catching contests, but I'm not going to advise you to keep your fingers crossed for that one. I doubt that I'll even be showing off the bug catching contest since it's pretty much useless. <laughs>